there are a number of gaps. I think the biggest one to me is, or two really, I would say, first is that for those that are ctDNA negative, even in colorectal cancer, for example, where the majority of data is in so far, we know that probably 30, 40% of people that are ctDNA negative will still have recurrence if you follow them long enough, you know, two, three years and five years. So clearly, you know, it's not as good of a negative predictor. You certainly, we know if it's positive, the chance of recurrence is very high. But for those that are negative, there's still a sizable proportion of people that are still going to recur. So that negative result doesn't mean what we think it does. So I think there's a bit, you know, a lot more we need to learn about who are those people so we can properly identify them and then still treat them even though the test came back negative. The, the second one I think is that's a major gap still is in the advanced stage setting or, or in the recurrence monitoring setting, you know, if we've, you have this patient who they have scans that day or very recently showing that there's no tumor there, but just this ctDNA test is positive. You know, what do we actually do for that patient right now? I would say really the best we should do is maybe get a different imaging modality. If you did a CT scan, maybe try a PET scan or an MRI, but we sort of know that there's a high chance of recurrence, but we're not certain about whether we can change that. Should we treat that patient at that time point? Or are we just going to expose a lot of patients to treatment that's not going to help them? There's a strong potential for lead time bias here where we can predict the recurrence is going to come, but by intervening earlier, we're not actually changing how long people live for. So there's trials ongoing to help answer that question, but I think that really is another you know, major uh, limitation to what we know about ctDNA today.